Uh huh. Now I'm gonna import your Skype. Yay! There it is. Let's make it bigger. Woohoo! Oh, I have too many windows open for some reason. How is that? <laughs> wow, interesting. Interesting. It should be fine, but it's showing my entire hmm, computer. I wonder how I can Weird. change that. Yeah, okay. Oh, then we'll just do that. Okay, so if any other files come on top of it. <laughs> All right, I think we are live and it should show up on YouTube. Yay, so no problem. I'll just be clicking back to see you in full screen. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let me just check that I'm showing up properly too. There we go, so don't just see my head. <laughs> I can see my head at least a little bit better. Okay, I think that's better. Yep, I think that's better. All right, excellent. Hey guys, hey Corey, hi Dylan. All right, so now to start the file and we are ready. Woo! Yay! Okay, let's see. <laughs> You are listening to the Musician Today Musician Podcast with your band coach. Tune in for your insight into a professional musician's life and awesome new music. All right, welcome everybody to another awesome episode of Musician Today. And we have an epic guest with us all the way from Atlanta. I will introduce her in just a second. So, um, today we have our episode 20, 20 <laughs> of Musician Today. Woohoo! Can't believe it's been 20 episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching and for joining the show. So, today we are live with a very special guest, Michelle Winters. She's a violinist, she's a musician you'll simply never forget. After spending many years practicing thousands of hours <laughs> in strict classical violin, Michelle's true passion surfaced when she discovered that playing to her favorite rock and pop artists couldn't be held as a secret anymore. So feeling liberated from this transmutation, her animated passion of performing on the violin is equal to a rock star performing on thousands of die to, uh, to the thousands of diehard fans. Michelle absolutely loves being the life of the party and adores playing music from Led Zeppelin to Lady Gaga. Woohoo! <laughs> she has been highly praised for her musical maturity and abilities to swiftly adjust without hesitations um, changing in tempo, key signature, um, genre, and more. So she's a super versatile artist. Michelle's commitment to providing excellent music can be heard all the way from local restaurants to Atlanta's Hartsville Jackson International Airport, where she was featured in the Atlanta Journal Constitution for soothing stress travelers. And I myself watched those videos and I love them. She has performed <laughs> for clients and notable people such as Patricia Nash, Billy and Bernie Marcus, SunTrust Bank, Porsche, Tarani um, Couture, and more. She has also been seen and heard in various television and movie mediums, such as Fox Sports and the film pitch Perfect 3. Michelle is proudly endorsed by Peak Music Stands. All right. And before we go any further, you guys can find Michelle on her website at michellewinters.net, on Facebook forward slash M Winters Violin, on Instagram M Winters Violin, and on Instagram for her new singing channel, it's Michelle Sings 135. Woohoo! And on Twitter, forward slash, um, as well, sorry, sorry guys, um, I do this a lot, but <laughs> M Winters Violin. So go ahead, follow her, find her, listen to her amazing music and her newly sort of discovered voice and singing. We all enjoy that. So, all right, welcome, Michelle. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you? Great. I'm great. I'm, I'm amazing. Today's a great day. It's kind of rainy, but it's good. So, <laughs> all right. So, what would you say um, as a violinist and a singer, mm -hmm. how do you manage your day? Could you describe to us a normal day in your life? Yeah, so absolutely. Speak? So, um, I try to practice violin for at least four hours a day, especially um, about 30 minutes to an hour scales, and then about 
uh, 45 minutes to an hour subject, and then about an hour of like some pieces that I'm learning, um, and then an hour for whatever I want, whether, whether it is the pieces or like a pop song I'm learning. And then the singing, I realized because my vocal, um, like technique is very, uh, um, I don't know how to say it. it's very rough <laughs> like I did not sing no at all until like the beginning of this year yeah. um so I it does uh, it takes you know it needs a lot of work so I practice only for about 45 minutes or so when I sing so Amazing. yeah <laughs> well my sister's a singer and I heard that actually singing shouldn't go too long because it does yeah. exhaust you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it's interesting because like I think you saw my Insta story the other day of a quote by Pavarotti, and he was like, "I don't practice more than an hour a day." But it's interesting because I then looked up Maria Callas mm -hmm. uh, because I just I'm infatuated with her singing, mm -hmm. and um, it said that uh, when she first started like her real like voice lessons, mm -hmm. she would practice like four to six hours a day. So it's just kind of interesting to see these two schools mm -hmm. of thought, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know. <laughs> well, I think it's very similar to like mastering an instrument. So when you start, it's not that you are singing all through the four hours. Maybe there's some things you're right. figuring out still. Yeah, yeah right. hard to do. Right. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we love it. We love both your violin and singing. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> um, thank you. How do you find balance between, like, you know, performing artist career and having friends and family? I think for me personally, that's the biggest question. <laughs> so I kind of get asked this a lot because mm -hmm. um, I personally do not teach. Um, my work days are, like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday when mm -hmm. I have, you know, most of my gigs and whatnot. Yeah. So Monday through Thursday, I try to relax as much as possible because I'm one of those people where I can easily get overwhelmed and stressed, mm -hmm. especially with, like, family and friends and just other people's drama. So I try to avoid that to the best of my ability. I don't watch... Um, action TV or movies. I don't watch horror. Um, if I watch comedy, it's got to be like kid friendly comedy because mm -hmm. even like adult comedy, I can't handle it. It's like, oh my gosh, like why would Johnny do that? Oh my gosh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So the, a lot of these extra things, mm -hmm. if I don't allow them into my personal thoughts and stuff like that, I'm yeah. able to balance, um, you know, uh, my myself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. excellent. That's a very good answer. I think like it's very important to take care of yourself as an artist, as a yeah. person, as a human being. I recently yeah. woke up with my back so sore that I couldn't move. I had to cancel my students that day. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's your body telling you got to slow down, right? So yeah, that's absolutely. Gonna happen. Excellent. Why don't we have a listen to one of your amazing songs and then we can okay. talk about it a bit more and you can tell us about the process on your work right okay so okay. this is roads enjoy guys Thank you. 
it. <laughs> it's gonna be my new jam. <laughs> so I have a question. Was this all recorded on acoustic violin or electric violin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all recorded on electric violin. No, no, not electric violin. Acoustic. Acoustic. My bad. Nice. Acoustic. Yeah. That's yeah. What I Sorry. Thought because I could kind of feel like there's there's life to it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So how do you usually create a track? Like, do you do everything yourself? Do you master and yeah. produce as well? No. <laughs> so essentially, how, that, uh, how my songs come about mm -hmm. is um, I do produce it myself. Like, I'll write it on um, Logic with, like, a little keyboard thingy. And then um, I found a really lovely uh, recording studio kind of in my area. Mm -hmm. And I just go there, record the violin part, and he masters it for me. Excellent. Um, so I do produce it, but I don't like master and engineer it. You know, I'm so. in the same boat. I record something like very simple demo version, and I send to my producer too. And then we go to the studio, and we start totally recreating it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, I love sometimes that. There, there are things where I'm like, oh, I want this effect, but I'm not quite sure how to do it in Logic. And he's yeah. like, oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> fantastic very cool so is your work all yours or do you collaborate as well and like create sort of co-writes with other people currently it is all myself but i want to i'm kind of in the thought process mm -hmm. of a new album right now mm -hmm. and i want to incorporate um like live piano and live guitar mm -hmm. um because if i were to have you know stuff like that in my music now it would uh, be um from computer generated and whatnot yeah. but um i would i am thinking about collaborating with some other folks in my area to give kind of like a more um sentimental intimate sound to the music mm -hmm. so yeah Amazing. <laughs> look forward to hearing that that's gonna be lovely Thank all right you. um so when was that point when you decided that the classical world of music was not enough like do you remember that moment where you're just like okay i'm doing this and what prompted you to do it was there a person or someone inspired you yeah <laughs> absolutely well um so i have been playing violin for almost 20 years and within my two first two years of playing um, I met some family members in Alabama, uh, and they were like, oh, you play violin, you can fiddle. And <laughs> so I was like, what? <laughs> and that was my first experience of ever playing without sheet music, being thrown into, like, hey, we're in the key of G, mm -hmm. play along. And, you know, I somehow was not afraid of it. And whenever I would uh, visit those family members, they'd be like, hey, let's keep playing, let's yeah. keep playing. Yeah. And um, so I kind of already had this kind of like as a uh, tool in my back pocket growing mm -hmm. up. Um, but somehow somebody gave me the idea when I was in high school or something that if I really wanted to be a professional musician, if I really wanted to make um, a good steady income, I had to do classical because that's where the money is at. <laughs> and so I, you know, I believed them and I was like, okay, I did not start when I was three, five years old. I did not have a very good teacher. I got to, you know, go back to studying, um, basic stuff of scale subject, you know, literally mm -hmm. uh, from square mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So I did. And, um, you know, the fruits of my labor, um, obviously flourished, but what hit me was actually a couple of years ago, I was working on Mendelssohn concerto in my university and it's the Mendelssohn Concerto is my absolute favorite, but I just, I felt so stale and stagnant and I didn't feel that it was resonating with me. This was my favorite piece ever and I looked forward to working on it, but when I actually was working on it, it made me so unhappy. So to combat this, I decided to set a timer for 30 minutes and play whatever I wanted. It could be free improvising, it could be putting on Bruno Mars, whatever, just to like see, you know, if that if that was what I needed to feel better. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that within those 30 minutes, I was much more happier than any time that I had spent in the uh, Mendelssohn. And I decided, you know what, if people like Lindsey Sterling and other electric violinists can make this 
their career. Obviously, they're super passionate. They're happy. They're not miserable like me. This isn't the way to go. I need to do what makes me happy. So when I decided to kind of go down this route, I thought, okay, I'll do jazz violin. And I quickly discovered that I'm not into jazz. <laughs> not not to say that like jazz sucks yeah. or anything. It's just it's not my thing. Yeah. You know. Um. I mean, if you want me to play a jazz song, I can, but it's not my forte. You know. Right. And I think the thing that like hit me about like pop and rock is I think I was listening to a lot of like Paradise City, and I was like, mm. man, wouldn't it be cool to play like the Slash solo on violin? <laughs> wouldn't it be cool to play John Bon Jovi on violin? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be so cool? Wouldn't that be so fun? These are my literally my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be awesome? And so I did. Nice. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it's actually funny. We talked about that with Mark Wood the other day. He said, yeah. um, all the classical composers are great, but it's a Mendelssohn story. It's not Michelle's story. So it's mm -hmm. time to tell your story, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and yeah. I, I remember something that Mark said to me like a couple of years ago and I asked him. Mm -hmm. It was like my first time ever checking out a Viper. And he was like, I want to hear what you have to play. And I was like, Mark, I'm trying to learn the instrument. How can I play what I want to play? I'm learning the ropes now. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to work the stupid thing. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because I went to the Markwood Rock Orchestra camp this summer, mm -hmm. and it was remarkable how in those couple years my mindset had totally shifted that, hey, you know, once you've got it down, you've really got it down, and you can use it to... Um, to really promote what you got to say as a musician and as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it was phenomenal how uh, he really totally embraces that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, fantastic. I'm actually so excited yeah. I'm getting a Viper soon. I just put oh. in my order, yeah. It was a gift from family for Christmas, so I'm like, yay. That's so sweet. How many strings? Uh, seven. I'm gonna do like nice. orchestral stuff on it, bass lines, everything. I want to record nice. everything. Yeah, yeah. Did you get it fretted or unfretted? Um, phantom frets, so I can still see where they are right. if I need to, but I'm still free to move like a violinist, right? So right, yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> so excited. <Yeah. laughs> so, all right, amazing. Why don't we listen to one more song? Okay. Um, okay. Then you can tell us um, how that came to be. Okay. All right, so this, guys, is the yearning. It's one of my favorite. Enjoy. Aww.
love it. <laughs> but at some point in this, your violin almost sounds like a viola. So I like that depth yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the song, I was working on it back in like May, June. And uh, it was, um, so obviously I had a little bit more experience with like working logic and stuff like that and I was like okay I think I'm gonna push myself a little bit out of my comfort zone and, and kind of explore around other things that I had never like clicked on before mm -hmm. and um I just I when I was listening to it I was also working on it a lot at like 2 3 a.m which is really unusual for me because I usually um am like passed out by 11 midnight yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but, so, it, I would look out my window, and during the time, I was watching, like, a lot of Sailor Moon, and I was like, yeah, Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask, they're yearning for each other, they want each other, they're searching for each other, so I was like, I'm gonna call it yearning, because I got them on my nice. mind. <laughs> you know what, I hear a little bit of Lindsay Strolling in it, I think one of her new songs, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, well, to be quite frank... I think of all of Lindsay's music, her very first album, um, I am obsessed with. There's like one or two tracks that I'm not a big fan of, but the entire thing. I remember when I first listened to the entire thing a couple of years ago, and I was like, this is genius. I wish I had written this. This is genius. <laughs> and um, I mean, I like some of Lindsay's other songs and whatnot, but some of them I just, I feel like... This is just my opinion. I feel like they're kind of a commercially made. They're just like, yeah. she yeah. puts them out there just yeah. to have them out there. But I feel like that very first album, you know, if she made it after getting booed off of America's Got Talent, mm -hmm. and, you know, people were saying, like, oh, my God, you can't do this. And it's kind of like, hey, I can. Yeah. So that entire album is really inspirational to me. And I remember... Um, transcendence would always pop on like pandora radio for me and it really was like man i want to have songs kind of like that kind of like transcendence mm -hmm. kind of, and i also really like to listen to um caitlin deville or do you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah some of her original songs are also kind of like that yeah. <laughs> um also Alan Walker, the, not the violinist, but the yeah, producer yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. Um, and early Marshmallow. I, I really love these uh, kind of early 2000s vibes, you know, where it's not so much, um, it's not super bass heavy, mm -hmm. um, not trap heavy, not yeah. like hip hop -y, like a lot of modern music is. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more on like the 80s, 90s uh, dance vibe, and I really love that. Yeah. Um, so I was for yearning. I wanted it to be uh, definitely very authentic because with Rhodes, I was really concerned about what people would think. It was my very first song, mm -hmm. and I remember at the time I was just um, I. I'm trying to think. <laughs> at the time, it was actually this time of year, last year, I had a lot of struggles going on in my life. And I was concerned about what people thought about me, not only for my music, but me as an individual. Mm -hmm. And when yearning, when I was writing Yearning, I really gave zero free holidays about what people <laughs> thought. I was like, that's it. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't care if... Um, people like it or they don't like it. I want it to be myself. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, the violin lines are completely different from both songs. I mean, obviously, the melody is different. But if you listen to Rhodes, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. While on Yearning, it's like there's a lot of runs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I did that because... <laughs> Um, when I was recording Rhodes, it was my very first time ever being in a recording studio, and I was like, man, I don't want to waste the recording engineer's time by like, oh, wait, no, I don't want that line, or stuff like that, so I pre-wrote everything in Rhodes. Mm -hmm. While in Yearning, I had practiced it a lot, and when I came into the studio, I had no sheet music or anything, I just knew that that's what I wanted it to sound like. There were some moments where I would, like, have to stop and be like, oh, wait, I didn't want that, I want another thing, but it was pretty remarkable, because I think yearning was smooth sailing in the recording studio, while Rose, I was really, like, really nervous, so it's kind of interesting how these two songs, they're both upbeat. Um, and they're on both in minor keys, mm -hmm. 
but they have two totally different personalities. And I think that's um, pretty cool. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. The process changes with every song. Like, we did yeah. 10 on my album just now, and we finished it this spring, and mm -hmm. every one of them was different. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's interesting how that shapes as you go, and then you get an experience and go, like, okay, now I know what I want to do in this track, right. but then I want to add something new. So then it takes on a whole other life. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, do you plan to record on electric instruments? And what's your position on electric violin versus the acoustic? Like, what's what's your favorite? You know, I'm not quite sure because even a couple of years ago, when I first started um, diving into playing like alternative strings mm -hmm. as a more career thing, I remember listening to a lot of people playing electric violin and not electric instruments. And I was like, when you heard people playing on electric instruments, I felt like sometimes the sound wasn't as clean as I would have liked, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because I think at the end of the day, it really depends on the recording engineer. Because for example, um, like Mark's recording of his song, Fivaldi Rocks, you would have never known that was done <laughs> on an electric violin. It's yeah. so clean. Yeah. While if you listen to some other songs that were recorded with Viper, they're not that, they're not as clean. So, you know, I think whatever you feel um, floats your boat, you know, if you have a vision or an idea of how you want your sound to come about, mm -hmm. and if you have a very good recording engineer who is open to your ideas and stuff like that, obviously you're good to go. So um, whether or not electric violin or acoustic violin um, is one better than the other, it's just essentially whatever you're more comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if you also notice in Yearning, the reverb is like super like turned up while the reverb on yeah. uh, Rhodes is not. Yes. And I, I didn't realize that until like my second or third time in the recording studio okay. when <laughs> the guy accidentally had it super high up because of like a vocalist before. And I was like, wait, we could have had that? You're kidding. I should have just said, can I have a crap ton of reverb? And so that's why Yearning has a crap ton of reverb, because I love reverb, quite yeah. frankly. You know, yeah. if you listen to violins back in, like, the 1700s, 1800s, where would they play it? In halls, yes. you know, yes. in churches. And yes. churches naturally have that beautiful sound yes. to add that reverb and whatnot. And in a recording studio, often so you don't have that so you have to make that artificially mm -hmm. and I just I personally I love that sound even when I'm playing with my electric violin um, my amp has a built in reverb like pedal knob thingy mm -hmm. I always turn it up I love it so. yeah I love it too yeah it does make it flow smoothly it makes it, it does. appear in a giant space I love that too I remember yeah. when I got my Roland keyboard, 1999 KR3 Roland, that we dragged all the way from the UK in here. Um, wow. Whenever I would play on it, I would put the reverb to the max as well. And it sounds like yeah. I'm playing grand piano on stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. All right, well, why don't we now play a little game? Okay. <laughs> so I like to test my guests on how fast they can answer questions in under a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit of a rapid fire game. Um, it's not too serious. We just have like 10 questions that you have to answer in you know under a minute and see how fast you can actually get to the answers. So why don't we try it? <laughs> okay. I have a countdown, then I'm going to start. It's, it's a 60, 60 second, second countdown, and then, then I'm gonna, gonna read, read the first, first question. So um, okay, are you up for it? it? Yeah, totally. Okay, are we ready? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, so we're, we're ready. ready. What was the most memorable show you ever played? The most memorable show? So, yeah. Oh, um, ooh, too many. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're looking at what age did you pick up violin? What age did I pick up the violin? I was nine years old. Nice. Okay, how, how many instruments do you own? Uh, violin or non-violin? Either. 
<laughs> oh, I probably own somewhere between around seven, maybe seven instruments. Nice. Uh, violin, acoustic, or electric? Ooh, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> what motivates you? Uh, my dreams. Nice. What YouTuber yeah. you just can't stop watching? D Sharp. Yeah, I love, love it. D Sharp. Oh my god. <laughs> Your favorite songs to cover? Name three. <gasps> oh, um, I really like Senorita, yeah. Old Town Road, and uh, Crazy Train, Ozzy. Nice. Yes. Okay, out of time or no, but we're gonna keep going. Two more questions left. Okay, name okay, three okay. people you admire. Three people I admire? Yeah. Um, I definitely admire Sia, I mm -hmm. definitely admire Mark Wood, and I definitely admire myself. <laughs> yeah, very good. That's amazing. Last um, two questions. Okay, two more left. Dogs or cats? Cats. Oh, actually, birds. 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 Nice. Birds. Yes. <laughs> they sing. They're beautiful. Uh, name, <laughs> name three violinists you follow on Instagram. Um, I definitely follow Bridget Fiddle. Um, I follow uh, Ariel uh, Zetlin violin like that. Um, and uh, it's not a violinist, but Tina Guo. Yeah. Oh, my Tina. God. All of my favorite you just named. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you for playing, Michelle. We didn't make it in time, but we had fun. And I think we learned yeah. a bit more. Yeah. I'm sorry, but the audio like kind of went out a oh, little sorry, bit, yeah. so that's, that's why that's I had my to repeat fault. the questions. That's my fault. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, no worries. Um, before we go, though, I would like to ask you for one more thing. Is what would be the advice that you would give to a younger performer who wants to be an entertainer in today's industry, like you are? Uh, what would be sort of like the one piece of advice you kind of leave us with? Don't you ever, 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 ever listen to what others have to say um if you a hundred percent believe in what you are doing a hundred percent it can't be 98 percent. it can't be 99 percent. if you a hundred percent believe in what you're doing is your uh true path in life or whatever you know if you can see yourself doing that successfully go for it. If people say, no, you can't do it. If people say like, really, can you make a lot of money off of that? If people say like, oh, that's cute and all, but when are you going to get a real job? Don't listen to them. No, seriously. Like, even if you have to be in a dark period or in a very, or like struggle for a little bit first, just know that if you can continue with believing in yourself, in your dream and your vision, then you will go very far. So don't ever give up, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. That was beautiful. It's so so honest and uh, open. We appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. It's I mean, true. You have to go for what you, say it. Yes, you have to go for what you believe in. And it's true that you might not see success in like the first year or two, or maybe yes. even more. Um, I like to listen to Gary Vee. He's a businessman. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. One of my favorite well, too. Yeah. Yeah, so Gary Vee and a lot of other um, mm -hmm. like motivational speakers like that, they essentially, I mean, I'm going to be quite frank, they get a lot of their information from basic folks that were doing this back in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite quotes, quite frankly, is by Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. who was hired by Dale Carnegie to figure out why was Dale Carnegie and a whole bunch of other folks at the time, why were they so successful? And this was back in the 30s and 40s when we didn't have Instagram and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, if folks were successful, they were very successful. Anyway, so a quote by Napoleon Hill is, if you can conceive it, essentially like think of it, um, and if you uh, 100% believe in it, you can achieve it. So conceive, believe, achieve. So... Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. I love that quote. I'm going to use it. Yes. Next. <laughs> so before we go, guys, go ahead, follow Michelle. You've already seen her on the web, michellewinters.net on her website, on Facebook at mwintersviolin, on Instagram, um, mwintersviolin, on her Instagram singing channel. Uh, you can find her at michellesings135 and on Twitter at mwintersviolin. So go ahead, yeah. download her singles. Are they on iTunes? Oh yeah, there's yeah. one on iTunes, Download your from Spotify. And yes. Yeah, they're wherever you um, stream digitally. 
So. Amazing. Very good. Thank you so much, Michelle, for coming in today. I've learned so much. I'm going to be inspired the whole evening, day, week, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we have more amazing podcasts coming up this week. It's a busy one for musician today. So I really appreciate you doing this. And sure. we can't wait to hear more projects from you. Maybe we can have you back on the show a couple of months down the road or so when you have your album or you have some new idea to share with us or an interesting performance or anything, that'd be amazing. So Absolutely. we're looking forward to it. And thank you. Have an amazing day and all the best with your creative process. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Okay, now we're going out and I got to get myself a new computer. <laughs> Another one. Outro. Where is the outro? <laughs> There we go. <laughs> That's all, folks. If you like Iron Fiddle songs, download them at mirabarminka.com forward slash music. See you next time.